I'm glad that you're here. If this is your first time, I'd love to meet you. On, on Christmas Eve, if you were here, man, we had a huge crowd. We had scores and scores and scores of first-time visitors from our community. And so if that was you, if you were here on Christmas Eve and you're back today, uh, I'd love to have an opportunity to meet you at the conclusion of the service. And we want to welcome you to Hollywood Community Church. And we're glad you're here. This is one of the least attended Sundays of the year. So the fact that you're here shows that you are one of the faithful, one of the elite, one of the dedicated. No, seriously, as pastors, we talk about Sundays like this. As pastors, we sit back and we say, oh, okay, there's not going to be a lot of people in church today. So I want you to know I am extremely encouraged by your attendance today, and I'm glad that you're here. So today I want to do something just a little different. Uh, I mean, not extremely different, but more than preach a message today, I want to have a conversation I want us to have a conversation about um, our theme for next year um, and where um, I think God is leading us and, and probably more than anything else, uh, more than what I think you need in your life, I want to talk to you today about what I need in my life. Is that okay? So, so the message today isn't for you, the message today is for me. You're just an observer in that today, all right? So, so uh, you can pray for me, not only as I preach the message, but you can pray for me that I will live the message. So today we introduce, and we'll have banners up next week and everything, we introduce our theme for next year. Our theme for next year is Pray Believing. So, so our theme last year was Live Generously, and, and I really feel as a congregation that we were able to take a step forward in, in, in living out real life generosity. And what I mean by that, I'm not talking about the fact that our offerings increased. I'm talking about the fact that, that as a congregation, we are learning what it means to be generous with what God has given to us. And we look not only for our own needs, as Paul says in Philippians chapter 2, but we're constantly looking for the needs of others, and we're looking for opportunities to minister to people. And I hear stories on a regular basis of how you, as part of our church family, are doing that, and how God is using you. And so uh, I commend you for that. And let's not stop, just because it's not going to be our theme for 2019, let's not stop living generously. Let's continue looking for opportunities to do that. But this next year, our theme is pray believing. And here's what God is speaking to me about and God is speaking to our elders and our staff is this year we want to we want to learn we want to really learn what it means to connect with God. Quite frankly, we talk a lot about prayer but we rarely pray as much as we should. And in 35 years of ministry, I don't think I've ever spoken with somebody that would say, man, Brian, I got a problem. And I say, what's your problem? I pray too much. <laughs> I just pray too much. Would you pray for me that I wouldn't waste so much time praying? Nobody's ever told me that. But I've had scores and scores and scores of people that admit to me that, Brian, I know I should pray, we talk about prayer. I want to pray, but I don't pray as I should. As believers, sadly, we're not good prayers. Now, now you might be, and if you are, man, I would love to have a conversation with you because I want to learn from you. And, and when I say we're not good prayers, that is not me uh, indicting you and me accusing you of not being a good prayer. Today, I want you to know my heart. That's a personal indictment. It's a personal accusation. And I would stand before you honestly and transparently today, and I would tell you that my prayer life is not as important, it's not as vibrant, it's not as powerful, it's not as passionate as it should be. You'd think after almost 50 years of being a believer, 35 years in ministry, that I would have this thing figured out, but I confess to you that I don't. 
After 35 years of ministry, I'm still learning to pray. So quite frankly, and I'm not just being overly transparent, I'm being honest, this series is probably more for me than it is for you. I long to connect with God in a way that is fresh, in a way that is real, in a way that is life-changing. So we're going to talk about that specifically during the month of January, but, but we're going to flesh that out in every aspect of our life as we work through the year 2019. So next year, we're, our, our next week, I guess it's next year too, I can actually say that. Next year, next Sunday, we're going to look at a probably misunderstood passage. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 21 where Jesus curses the fig tree and he looks at the disciples and he said, if you had faith, you could say to this mountain, be removed and it would be removed and cast into the sea. We're going to talk about what that means next week. To pray believing, I'm afraid. And once again, I can't speak for you, I speak for me, but I would venture to say that you're a lot like me, that we pray, but in the back of our mind, there's times that we're praying for God to do something, and we really don't believe that he's going to do it. And we pray, but we don't pray with faith. So we're going to talk about that next Sunday. On the 13th, I want to speak about something that God is really speaking to me about and it is about hearing the voice of God. We're good talkers, but we're not very good listeners. I'm a great talker. My wife would tell you she starts a, she starts a sentence, and I finish it half the time. Don't I, Vic? Huh? And she'll look at me, rightfully so, and she'll say, would you just listen? That's the way we pray. We come to God with an agenda, we come to God with a list, we come to God with the things that we want to tell him. And that's a part of prayer. Do not misunderstand me. That's a very important part of prayer. But if we're not careful, our prayer life is one-dimensional. Our prayer life is one-sided. We talk to God, but we seldom give God an opportunity to talk to us. So we're going to talk about that on the 13th. On the 20th, Brad's going to preach a message out of James chapter 5, praying with faith. Be a powerful message. And then we're going to celebrate on the 27th. We're going to have one of the most unique services we've ever had at Hollywood Community Church, and we're going to celebrate answers to prayer. In the meantime, we're going to do something that we've never done since I've been here before. Starting on January 7th, we're going to encourage you to do 21 days of prayer and fasting. Now, I'm going to explain that a little bit today. I'm not saying you have to do a complete fast. You might sit back and say, oh my word, I can't eat for 21 days. This is HCC's recovery diet plan from the holidays. No, it's really not that at all. It's really not. And we're going to challenge you. We're not going to tell you how to do it. We're going to challenge you to hear from God. And we're not going to tell you what to pray for. We're going to ask you to spend time with God and say, okay, God, what is the, what is the heaviest burden on my heart? What, what, is the, what is the miracle that I would like to see done this year? Maybe, maybe you have a husband, a wife, a family member who does not know Jesus, and you've prayed for him or for her for years, and this year you desperately want God to reach down and grab a hold of that individual. Maybe you have a son or daughter who has walked away and you long for them to come back. Maybe it's something personal, maybe it's something financial, maybe it's something health-wise, but, but this month we're going we're gonna to reach out to God and we're going to try our very best in our own ability and with the empowerment of the Holy Spirit to connect with God in a way that we've never done it before. We're going to celebrate on the 27th. We're going to have two special prayer services, and I announce them ahead of time because most of the time when you say we have a prayer service, hardly anybody comes. We're going to have two prayer services on Wednesday night, and you say, Brian, what are we going to do? We're going to pray. We're going to pray. We're, we're going to do it unique in a unique way, and we're going to be telling you more about that in the days and weeks to come. So, when we talk about prayer, prayer is defined in a variety of ways. 
If I asked you today, what is prayer? I'm sure I would get a variety of answers. Probably the most common definition of prayer is this. Prayer is asking things from God. And so when we think what prayer is, we think, okay, I need God to do something for me. And so I ask him, and that's what my prayer life is. And probably the majority of your prayer life and mine is a prayer list in which we're asking God for something. And once again, there's nothing wrong with that. I have an extensive prayer list that I go through on a regular basis. But prayer is more than just asking things from God. John R. Rice wrote a book that carried a little bit further called Prayer is Asking and Receiving. So prayer isn't just asking, but it's also receiving from God. Great definition. I have nothing against John R. Rice, great man of God, but I think prayer is more than that. I love how David defined prayer, and I, I, I'm, not, I'm not putting this up on the screen. You can look for it, but in, in Psalm 25 and verse 1, David said this. Think, listen to the words. David said, unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Isn't that a great definition of prayer? Lifting up of my soul to God. So so it's more than just asking for something, but it's actually a, a, a spiritual connection of my soul, my spiritual being with God. So God, I I lift up my soul to you. I love that. By the way, if you want to pray, and we're not going to have time in this series to talk about it, but one of the best ways to pray is to pray scripture, to actually take the prayers of scripture and pray scripture. I like this definition of prayer, and it's a little different. It's in Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 13. You might want to turn there. We actually preached from it a month or two ago when we did our series on city changers. And I want to pull one verse out, and it's verse 29 and verse 13, where, where Jeremiah said this. Obviously, God's speaking through Jeremiah, and God says this, You will seek me, and you will find me when you search for me with all of your heart. Would you read that verse with me? Let's read that corporately together. Would you do that? Let's lift our voices and read it together. Would you? You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Let's read it one more time. That sounded really good. Would you? You will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all of your heart. I'm afraid I can't talk about your prayer life, but I can talk about mine. My prayer life is always or often a a one-way street. It's me asking, it's me petitioning God. And very seldom do I sit back and say, okay, God, I am seeking you. And I am seeking you with all of my heart. So all of my heart means more than just two minutes in the morning. Or, or, or three minutes on my way to work. But seeking God with all of my heart indicates an intentionality. It indicates a, a desire to make that a priority. To make my, my search for God, to know Him, to understand Him, to make that a priority in my life. So, so, so this year, our goal is not just for you to pray more, for you to say, okay, I, I was praying five minutes a day, now I'm praying 10 minutes a day. That, that would be great, and, and, and I don't want to minimize that. But our desire is for you and me and for us as a congregation to seek God with all of our hearts, with all of our soul, with all of our being, that we might cry out like Paul, that I may know him. And that passion to know God is, 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 is much greater than, than, than coming to church on Sunday. It is much greater than just opening my Bible for a few minutes in the morning. And both of those things are extremely important. But there is an overriding passion in my heart to know God. 
That's what prayer is. And that's when we can pray believing. That we can pray with faith. Having confidence that we're not praying selfishly. We're not praying, as James says, to satisfy our own selfish desires. But we are praying the mind and the heart of God. Because we know Him. So would you pray with me today as we begin? Lord, we confess that there's so many noises in our life. There's so many obstacles that distract our attention from you that it's hard to focus on you. We have good intentions, but our mind wanders, our phone rings, our kids call out to us, The job has demands. And we allow all of the activities of life to become a distraction. And that we allow them to disconnect us from the source of life. So Lord, I pray as as we begin this journey this year to, to learn to pray Lord, Lord, and, and it, Lord, you know it's more than just saying the right things or reciting the wrong words or, 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 or spending the correct amount of time. But God, our, our soul cries out to you. And we lift our voice and our heart to you, desiring to know you in a way that is fresh, that, that's real, in a way that is powerful in a way that is life-changing. God, we don't want to be the same. I don't want to be the same. And God, I desperately need you. And I believe that our congregation does as well. So Lord, as we take this journey, I pray that you would speak to our hearts. Teach us. Speak through us. Connect with us. Today, tomorrow, this year. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So that was the introduction, all right? So, so today I want to talk about one of the first aspects of prayer that, that, that's probably a little difficult that most of us rarely, if ever, practice. Today I want to talk to you about fasting. If I, if I asked how many of us fast on a regular basis, I probably would get a very little response. And by the way, if if fasting is something that you practice on a regular basis, I would love to have a conversation with you because because I am learning. I joke and say that fasting has never been one of the spiritual disciplines that I have practiced in my life. I often joke that I fast fast. (laughs) I fast in between meals, you know, between breakfast and lunch, I fast. Uh, I've always joked that I fast every day from 10 o'clock at night to 6 o'clock in the morning. Every single day I fast that way. Quite frankly, I'm not alone. Most Christians regularly or do not regularly practice fasting. Why is that? There's two reasons. Let me just give them to you. They're not in your notes. You can turn over your paper and write it if you want to. But the first reason is a cultural excuse. We have a cultural reason not to fast. We live in a pleasure-driven society, do we not? Man, 